to the Lucas Oil 200 presented by General Tire. Well, as you see there, the skies have cleared. The track is dry. And we have cars, we have drivers ready to go. Let's go trackside now for the command. From the crossroads of America, Indianapolis, from one motorsports capital to the other. Come on, everybody, say it with me. Drivers, start your engines! Getting ready to start this thing, Jamie. All right, the pace car took that hard left. 34 cars lined up, 80 laps to come. Green flag is out. Drew Dollar leads up. Number five, three on the 35. He was sleeping. 25 is going to get down behind you. Walk back to the 25. Just drag back here. Drag back a little bit. Close this gap up. Come into the middle. Got a big run. There you go. Just warm up for the 25. We'll be all right. Great illustration of how important the spotters are here. I know Chase can attest to that. A spotter here does more work than, than anywhere else we go to. Yeah, absolutely. This is the one place in specifically this series. I think the, the spotter is such a big deal. There's so many you know people out there with the experience. They've never been on a super speedway. And I know for me, I had Stevie Reeves, my first race here, and I think he's doing Jack Wood today. And uh, that'll be huge, just having that experienced spotter up there to really kind of guide you along the way. Yeah, that's a great question. And the trucks, to me at least, feel like they moved around quite a bit more. And you know, truthfully, too, that the trucks are a little more wild I feel like the whole race and that that was almost really big there with the 29 but yeah you know the the trucks definitely move around it I feel like it does make it a lot easier coming back to the Arca car for sure big moment for the 29 at Derek Lancaster there nice save a little loose on the bottom of that racetrack uh -oh. oh trouble Thad Moffitt spins on the infield and we have more wrecking It's the 45 for Rich Bickle. Some damage. There's Thad's left for a quarter panel. I don't think there's a tremendous amount of damage. We saw the tire smoke there from Thad's car. I'm sure they can get that beat out. Thad Moffat talked this morning about how good this car was. The grandson of the great Richard Petty. I know he's watching. He's actually sitting on the 43 cup hauler watching this race. Either. Let's see what happens here. There's the 46, 45 running side by side. You see Dave Mater. Like Chase was talking, Dave Mater moved up a little bit. I think Thad thought about going through the middle, and then the hole closed up. He made contact with Rich in the 45 car. Let's take a look on board. What do you see here, Chase? Yeah, so right here, I mean, you can only see, obviously, the 63's tail bumper. And, yeah, they're starting moving around. It's one of those deals he moved up, and you think you can fill that hole, and once you get there, you know, the move, the, just the air coming off both cars, and it was closed up. So, fortunately, you know, there wasn't more cars that were caught up in that, but, uh, yeah, that's just part of racing here. Every time you come here, you're going to have situations like that. Derek Griffith to the point in the 55. Ooh, oh, look at the contact. Gracie Trotter gets into her teammate, Derek Griffith, then he goes around and they continue crashing. Greg Van Alst, Nick Sanchez. Scott Melton, the 69 car, also involved. Look at all the damage to Derek Griffith's car. He had just gotten in the lead, had the three teammates around him. Gracie made contact, and I didn't know, I don't know if maybe. Derek Griffith was on the on the brakes trying to control that car, but he, she couldn't she couldn't get away from him. So she's just trying to help her teammate here. Um, you know, just in the corner, it's so hard to, to bump draft, and just the biggest thing is just never doing it. You know, and it just gets him a little bit squirrely, and then you know at this point, it's it's really hard for her to, to not hit him just because of the the speed difference now, and she's trying to not get ran over from behind. And you hate doing that to your teammate, but uh, it's a learning lesson. She'll she'll keep learning. Let's listen in on Andy Jankowiak's radio. Protective of the bottom a little bit here. Uh, the outside seems to fall back. You gotta be smart here, man. If we're gonna make a move, we gotta have two or three go with us for sure. I think we're better off letting the others Ooh. make the mistake still, man. Something happened to the zero one of Chuck Hires. You saw Gracie try to get into the back of him. I think he was just trying to get out of the way. Yeah, it looked like off of turn two there, the, the right front was down and, and something. And I was just about to, to give a shout-out right down the road from Jacksonville. And 
uh, 61 years old and was Let's running almost there in the top five. You see he has some damage. I, as you mentioned, that right front is down. The eight of Sean Cor was able to get by. Look at the damage to the 25 of Gracie Trotter was not able to avoid the zero one, but we stay green. Chuck Hires is trying to get out of the way there. <laughs> Couldn't. Gracie got into the back of him. Got a car in the wall. There's four to go. Yeah, was, Coming yeah. off the turn four. I, I must have jinxed it, I guess. Scott Reeves, the 88. You can see all the damage. He's going to mow the lawn here for the, the track crew at Daytona. You can see all the evidence of the rain we had earlier today. You might get look at that. I mean, that's just a testament to what these track workers did in drying this track early on, because you see how soaking wet the infield is. Let's take a look exactly what was happening coming off turn four. Oh, Cut that right man. front wow, hard hit. Just such a bad angle. That was a hard, hard lick. Pace car continues to lead as he drops down, takes that hard left. That's our leader on the left, Corey Heim. Don't go down too soon here. He was able to pull it off. He is in front of his teammate. Look out, look at how they're jammed up pushing on the bottom. Sideways through one and two. Worry here is they're going to get too big of a lead here on Brett Holmes, and he's going to have a huge run here coming off of turn number four. Here they come off of turn four. Last lap. Corey Heim, the 18 year old, can he hold on? And he does. Corey Heim wins at Daytona. They orchestrated that restart yeah, perfectly. They, they did it perfect. They uh, definitely proved me wrong. And happy crew, obviously, to win at Daytona. It's, I mean, it's the dream. Everybody gets to, to grow up in racing. They dream of getting just to race here, let alone win here. Uh, Billy Venturini's made a really good habit of winning here, so it's cool to see them guys do it. You know, an 18-year-old like Corey Hunt to, to be able to come here. And like we were saying, after Kansas, get rewarded with this race, and now for him to win it. So it's pretty neat. Our cameraman, Jake, best in the business right there. He gets those beautiful shots when you guys win a race chase he gets in there gets that burnout shot he does an awesome job that's for sure it's always cool to see the angles that these guys come up with and corey has got a unique situation here he could go do like a slip and slide victory celebration <laughs> into the grass and the water here so i'm excited to see what he does take your pick right all the hard work and it goes to show you that toyota knows what they're doing they they saw something in this young man he won that race in kansas he said you're going to be our guy going for the championship here in the arca menard series one thing too to point out for this championship battle that's going to be neat is you know this is the one place you can lose a lot of points quick because of how big the field is so let's hear from our winner kate take it away as Corey heim is climbing out of that truck i don't know if he's a trying to let the sit in, sink in, that you have just now won Daytona, your second win in Arkham Menards. But really what is the strategy behind it all came down to that last restart. You guys executed perfectly behind the wheel. What was going on in your head? Yeah, like you mentioned, strategy. I mean, I got to give it all to Shannon Rush. He made the perfect call, uh, executed this race perfect, and uh, hands down to him. He uh, dialed this JBL Camry in perfect, and I uh, can't get enough thanks to uh, Toyota Racing, Venturini Motorsports, JBL, all the guys who make it happen. You helped Venturini Motorsports get their fourth win here in a row in Daytona. You are working with your teammates hard there at the end. How important and critical is that camaraderie being built on that team? Yeah, I mean, I got to give a lot of props to Drew Dollar. He, uh, he really helped me there at the end, just him being right behind. Me. I know he's got a little bit of uh, experience and he just raced the truck race too. So I uh, really trusted him and uh, paid off. 
Corey, how do you think this will change your career? Uh, for the better only. There's, uh, there's only one direction that can go. So uh, just really blessed to be here. And uh, like I said, thanks to everyone at Toyota Racing, JBL, Federated Motorsports, make it happen. Coming on board full-time, Corey Heim is going to celebrate his first Daytona, his second win in the Arkham Menard Series. This might just be the greatest season of all time. We got Denny defending Daytona. We got Joey, Kevin, and the all-time fan favorite. I'm just here so I don't get fined. The best season ever. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.